I don't think my career is over. I don't think everyone is surpassing me. Hey guys, even here, and in this video, we got a couple of very interesting uh, things. The first thing is Nick Walker and his first, let's say, honest statement about what happened this year and his Mr. Olympia prep. Uh, the only thing we got so far was that hostage video with uh, Matt Jansen, where it really felt like Matt Jansen was the puppet master or Nick's daddy. I mean, he took control of that video, he said what he said, and Nick was kind of like confirming it. And yeah, he got a little emotional, but like he didn't really say what he thought. This is a little bit more raw, you know, it's just Nick talking to his camera, speaking his mind, opening up, and telling us what he really feels like uh, right now, and what his future plans are as well, and how he sees things right now, uh, what is his perspective. So let me show you the video, a part of it, a short version of it. And then we're going to discuss it. You know, this time has really kind of took a toll on me, affected me mentally pretty, pretty hard. You know, this is life. And I understand, you know, I missed the Olympia this time around um, as well as last year. And I disappointed a lot of the fans that really just wanted to see me on stage. And trust me, I, I get it. I wanted to be on stage, too. It was very emotional and disappointing for me. But this isn't going to stop me. This isn't going to, you know, tell me you know, take away from my career. I don't think my career is over. I don't think everyone is surpassing me. Um, I just think, look, I had a bad couple of years. Things didn't exactly go the way I planned these past couple of years. I know who I am. I know exactly what I'm capable of doing. I, like I said, I don't think anyone is, you know, surpassing me by a long shot here. I have a couple shows, you know, planned out that I'm interested in doing. Um, I'm not speaking on any of those right now but because when i do it's when uh, that's when i'll feel ready um i'm i'm gonna you know excited for it you know and i hope you guys follow along for the journey for that one again this is not the end all right so basically he was of course he was affected mentally with this whole situation a lot of people are criticizing Nick heavily for skipping the Mr. Olympia, calling him Nick Talker. Some are even saying that he should have done the Mr. Olympia anyways, because he announced doing it, and us fans who are supporting him, we wanted to see him on that stage, and he failed us. He disappointed us, and he understands that. He was disappointed himself as well, of course. Now, the way I see it, I don't think it's uh, his fault, really. I think it's mainly his coach's fault. I mean, I don't think Nick is the kind of person that doesn't do what he has uh, planned. Uh, I don't think it's uh, him being lazy or cheating on his diet or anything like that. I think it's just Matt, like he admits, who wasn't focused on his athletes and didn't notice that Nick was not uh, getting in shape. And of course, he didn't do the show. He wouldn't look good. He didn't want to embarrass himself and place like eighth or something like that. But, but, in this video, he's saying that he doesn't think anybody surpassed him. And also, he already said that in his mind, he is still top three in the world. Now, is that correct? Well, we don't know. He didn't compete. Maybe he will never compete. However, he says this is not the end. He has a couple of shows planned this year. He says he's going to announce that once he thinks he's ready. I guess that meant once he thinks he's in shape. You know, he doesn't want to announce something and then not get in shape again. And which shows could it be? I am guessing Arnold Classic is one of them. And then maybe New York Pro again or something like that. Something close to Arnold. Because he wants to, of course, qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Can he do it in the Arnold Classic against Samson Daura? Probably not. But you never know. I mean, Nick was known for his consistency so far. And he started failing. So the same thing can happen to everybody. We don't know. But in my mind, if Nick Walker was at the Mr. Olympia, at his best... Again, it's woulda, coulda, but still, Nick did not, like, tear a huge body part, you know, it's not like he's melting, it's not like he's old, he's very young, he's very fresh, he can still achieve his maximum potential in the next couple of years, or this year, next year, if he does that, if he comes in conditioned, with better abdominal control, if he did that, for the Mr. Olympia, if he brought... Uh, what he was looking like a couple of weeks before last year's Mr. Olympia, 
in my eyes, he would probably play second, honestly. But again, I know this is a controversial take, I know a lot of you guys are disappointed at Nick, and you think that he's just, you know, talking and not doing anything, and I, and I understand, you know, you should call him out for that, so he can prove to us next year, but I think this is actually a great environment for Nick, uh, as Matt says, he needs more stress, and that actually, even though that's not the reason why he didn't get in shape, that has something to do with Nick's success so far, because he was always... Not a lot of people actually believed that he was gonna do the things he promised he was gonna do, and he still did it. So, now that everybody is doubting him, he's probably gonna work harder than ever, and potentially bring his absolute best package next year, and again, in my eyes, if he's at his best, he's still, maybe not top 3, but like a top 4 Olympian, he did beat Martin at the New York Pro, and I don't think Martin was a ton better at a Mr. Olympia compared to New York Pro, and Nick was off at the New York Pro, and Derek was off at the Mr. Olympia, Hari was off at the Mr. Olympia, if Nick was at his best, I don't see him beating Samson, but all those guys, I can see that, so I don't think, as Nick says, I agree with him, this is not the end, I'm sure next year we'll see the best version of Nick Walker, I don't know who his next coach is gonna be, we'll see about that, but as long as he doesn't face any big issues, I can see him again placing at the top of the Mr. Olympia again. If you guys disagree or you agree, tell me down below in the comment section. Alright, the next thing we got is Rafael Brandao, who announced that he's doing Romania Pro this next weekend. And uh, this is what he looked like at the uh, Mr. Olympia Brazil, where he did a guest posing. Obviously, he was uh, holding a lot of water here, so he doesn't look... Uh, very much conditioned, this can change a lot in one week, but, you know, at the Mr. Olympia, he was not at his best, he definitely didn't have his uh, condition that he used to have back in the day, when he was competing, when he was prepping with uh, Chris Asito, was he bigger than then, sure, but he still wasn't as good as he was at the Arnold Classic earlier this year, at the Arnold Classic, I think he was bigger and fuller, and more conditioned as well, so this year he took 8 at the Mr. Olympia, which is also a great result, but, you know, again, it wasn't him at his best. And earlier this year, like I said, at the Arnold Classic, he was good. He was definitely on. Not diced, but more conditioned than here, and big, full. However, a couple of weeks later, at the Arnold Classic Brazil, he was significantly worse with conditioning. A lot of people thought that Tonio Burton should have won that show because he was in a much better shape. Smaller, but definitely way more conditioned. And I guess Rafael relaxed a little bit because it wasn't a big show like Arnold. So what is he going to bring to the Romania? I mean, is he going to improve from Mr. Olympia? Or be the same? Or get worse? Well, you know, he wasn't on at a Mr. Olympia. So I'm expecting him to be, I guess, a little bit better at the Romania, I hope he's going to improve his conditioning, but, you know, there are also big chances of him just repeating the same conditioning, or even coming in worse, but it's not like that show is stacked, uh, who he's gonna go against, well, there is his countryman, uh, Horse MD, Marcel D'Angelis, who actually took third last year, uh, versus Samson Daura and Behrus Tabani, and I'm guessing he improved as well, I don't know what kind of conditioning he's gonna bring, because he really disappointed us with conditioning for the Iron Classic this year, so maybe he's gonna fail again, but maybe he's gonna be ready and better, bigger. Do I see him beating Rafael Brandao? No, I don't see that happening. Another guy that is also doing Romania Pro is Akim Williams, who took 10th at this year's Mr. Olympia, and for some reason I kind of feel like Akim is usually overlooked, you know, I think he's better than his placements, you know, at the Arnold Classic, he, he placed lower than Rafa, but Rafael was at his best at that show, and at the Mr. Olympia, Rafael still beat Akim Williams, so the chance of Akim Williams turning that around are not very high, but there is a possibility, you know, he, he was only two spots below Rafa at the Mr. Olympia, so if Akim improves, and Rafael gets worse or stays the same, then, you know, it's possible for Akim to beat him. And then also there is a possibility of Chris Bumstead jumping in. On Fuad's podcast, when Brett was the guest and Stefan Kinzel as well, 
they said that they know a, a big name, a huge name bodybuilder doing uh, one of those two shows, Prague or Romania, and they said, you can never guess who it is. Were they talking about Rafael Brandau or Akim Williams? I don't think so, I really don't think so. Martin is doing Prague, uh, Andrew, Andrew doesn't look like he's prepping for the next show, uh, Hunter Labrada, maybe, but I would also be kind of disappointed if that was it. It really sounded like a, like a huge name bodybuilder. Uh, could it be Derek or Hardy? I also don't think so. I mean, it's most likely not going to be Chris. I mean, what are the odds? But imagine if that happened. Fans would go crazy. I know Chris would risk a lot and wouldn't really gain that much, but fans would love it. And if Chris won that show, and I think it's very possible for him to beat Rafael Brando, because he's more conditioned, he has better structure, has more details. Sure, Rafael is a little bit bigger, but not that much bigger. It's not like Samson Daura. You know, Rafael is a lot smaller. I think Chris would actually have a very good chance. So if Chris won an open show, he would be the first and probably the only guy who also won a classic physique show, actually Mr. Olympia, and then a couple of weeks later, an open show. I mean, we saw that with two 12 guys, like Angel Calderon, Sean Clarita, but those guys are bodybuilders as well. They're just shorter bodybuilders. Classic physique guys don't do stuff like that. If Chris did it, it would be huge if you ask me. And fans would love it. Again, a chance of that happening, very, very slim, but... I'm still hoping, I'm still hopeful, maybe, maybe this is actually gonna happen, what do you guys think? And the final thing we got here today, guys, is the security camera footage from the gym, pure muscle fitness gym, where the incident with Jeff Nippard and Mike when week happened. And basically, in Jeff's statement, he said that uh, what was, well, the rumor that was going around is not true, that Jeff never approached Mike. He said that there is already a lie going around that Mike asked me to stay away from him and that I didn't listen and I approached him first. This is false. And uh, Pure Muscle Fitness has security footage to prove it. I think they should release it. They did release it. And let's check it out. Is Mike the one who approached Jeff? Or did Jeff actually go to Mike? Well, as you can see right here, Mike is far away from Jeff. He did walk past him, he smiled at him, he said something and he moved away. He continued uh, training his client. And when Jeff did his set, he went towards Mike with his camera guy. And he's, th he's saying something to him here, he's calling him. And then Mike looks at him, the guy with a camera is also going there to film this for content, I guess. He wanted to call out Mike. And then Mike turned around went to him, and I don't know what Jeff said, but yeah, Mike reacted very quickly here, so I'm definitely not justifying what Mike did here. Again, he's being a bully, he didn't need to do this. I really can't imagine uh, Jeff insulting him or saying something nasty to him, he probably just wanted to, you know, talk to him, but film it for his YouTube channel, for his social media, which is not cool, I guess, he wanted a reaction, he wanted to provoke the guy, but again, I do not justify by any means what Mike did, however, how about some personal responsibility, do you approach a guy that you had a conflict with, I guess, uh, who looks like a, like a gang leader, basically, with tattoos all over his, his face and his body and his head, you know, who is a former bodyguard of freaking Drake, who is six foot one and 300 pounds, do you do that if you don't want to get hurt? I mean, it seems like Jeff poked the bear here. Again, not justifying Mike what he did, he didn't have the right to do that, but it's not exactly the way Jeff described it. Jeff did lie to us, he did walk to him. So yeah, we got that. You know, we got things a little bit wrong, and now we're seeing it on this actual security camera footage. Jeff only posted it one part of the video where Mike uh, uh, assaulted him, but he didn't post what happened before, and he lied to us that he didn't approach Mike, and you can see that he did. We don't know what this guy said, 
Johnny Bravo here who made this video, he he wrote what uh, what these guys were saying. I guess he heard that from the people in the gym, but we don't know that. We can't hear the audio. What we can see, we can see, and it's not what Jeff said happened. And also Anton Wayant kind of confirmed that he also saw the footage and he saw what Jeff said happened. So Anton lied as well. I don't know why Anton lied. And Anton made a, a podcast in which he was calling out Mike, he was really harsh about him, uh, I guess they had a personal issue because Anton asked him to be in his video once and Mike didn't want to do that, so I guess uh, Anton had a personal agenda, because if he saw this video, he saw that what Jeff said is not true. Now once again, uh, should Mike be punished for what he did? Yes, absolutely. What he did was not right, I have to repeat that many times. But also, what Jeff said happened didn't happen the exact way he described it. Jeff lied. Jeff lied, and that is a fact. Again, I'm pretty sure when he approached him, he was still polite. He probably just asked, like, what is the problem, whatever. But Mike reacted the way he reacted, not justified once again. But again, if you are short, small, tiny, weak, soft guy like Jeff Nippard, you should be, you know, more, more responsible, you know, more careful. He probably never really had this kind of experience in his life. He didn't expect that somebody can just go crazy and attack you if you're, if you're, if you're calling them out, if you are approaching them and this and that. So yeah, I mean, again, personal responsibility. Don't, don't mess with these kind of guys. I mean, I wouldn't do it. And I'm definitely a lot bigger than Jeff, but I wouldn't mess with Mike. I would not approach him if we, had a, if we had an issue online. However, once again, Mike needs to control his rage, his temper, he should not be doing things like this. But, again, we don't know what Jeff said, we can see that he approached Mike, he got into his personal space, he started walking towards him, I don't think Mike felt threatened, but maybe in his experience as a bodyguard, he didn't want to risk it. If somebody's approaching him, who he had quote-unquote conflict with, he just, you know, reacted. Maybe his instincts as a bodyguard kicked in and he did what he did. However, he should have better self-control and he's most likely going to answer to the authorities for this. Uh, Jeff can definitely file a lawsuit and, you know, win because, again, what Mike did was unjustified, but uh, Jeff lying to us, saying that he did not approach him first, was also not cool. And here you can see exactly what happened. So guys, down below in the comment section, tell me what do you think now after seeing the actual footage, after seeing the whole story. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up for more content about bodybuilding. Yeah, this is not exactly a bodybuilding content, but it's still in the fitness industry realm and what everybody's talking about. So I had to mention it as well. But it's mostly bodybuilding, pure bodybuilding on this channel. So guys, if you want to see content like that, subscribe to this channel. Give it a thumbs up once again. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.